Hey, what's up? This is Nick, Infrasonic Audio. I uh, wanted to share an update on the development of the hardware version of Warp Core, which is a phase distortion and phase modulation oscillator released a software version in VCV Rack last year, and I've been working on porting it to hardware. So this is a prototype, uh, my first PCB prototype of the hardware version based on the DAISY platform. Um, today I'd like to talk mainly about the phase distortion algorithms because as you can see, if you're familiar with the VCV version, there are now eight LEDs, so eight algorithms um, or transfer functions for phase distortion instead of just the four. And I'm really excited about that. So uh, what I got going on, I've got the audio routed in so you can see a spectrum and oscill oscilloscope on VCV rack. Um, and I'm going to talk about the algorithms. So quick overview of the panel. We've got tuning. I'm not going to mess with that because it's synced to the scope. Um, we've got internal phase modulation, which kind of changes the phase modulation amount for uh, an internal oscillator synced to the, to the carrier. Um, you can adjust the ratio of that. We'll talk about that in the future video. And then we've got two phase distortion uh, operations that apply to the phaser uh, in series. So that one is applied after the other to the result of the previous. Um, the blue one comes first, that's the left, and then the red one comes second, that's the right. You can see that from the red LED and the blue LED, which I know is a little hard to see in the video. Um, I don't have a very good camera, but that will change someday. And then uh, these switches, we've got windowing, and I'll talk about what that means. And then we've got order, so PM uh, before PD and then PM after PD and that will change the tone a lot but I'm not going to cover that much of that in this video. As far as jacks uh, we've got uh, two outputs here. This one is zero degrees so this is a sine lookup of the phaser and this is a cosine lookup of the phaser so 90 degrees. Um, those will be configurable. The second output act rather will be configurable in a number of modes as well. And then these two jacks are uh, CV inputs. Uh, these are attenuverters for the uh, phase distortion amount. And we've got external phase modulation in, volt proactive, and internal phase modulation amount, which applies to this knob. So you can think of that as a CV that sums with this knob. So let's talk about the algorithms. Um, without a panel, this is hard to sort of wrap your head around, but I'm planning on grouping these into three distinct groups. So the top three LEDs or the top three modes are going to be uh, things that sort of change the the wave shape by sort of bending it or pinching it a little bit. The uh, next three below that, so the red is on the first of those three, are going to be modes that add significant overtones by wrapping or uh, repeating the phaser within its you know carrier period, and then the last two are sort of effects or utilities. So let's go through each one. I'll just show these. Um, on the sine wave first and the cosine wave because uh, they do look different and the uh, order actually does matter. So uh, firstly, this is what I'm calling um, bend, which is applying a curve to the phaser. That kind of goes from a uh, typical, obviously a sine wave shape into something that's closer maybe to a pulse wave. And that's even more so on the cosine output, which you'll see, see shortly. Um, if we cycle this down, now this is what I'm calling kink, uh, which is pretty much the same as the classic sawtooth um, phase distortion from the Casio CZ. It doesn't look like that on the sine, but you'll see that on the cosine. Again, the phase does matter um, for, the, for the final lookup. Um, and then the, the third of these sort of like wave distortion uh, modes is um, a pinch. So that's taking the phaser and then just sort of within its carrier period, pinching, pinching it down. And you'll see how that applies to, for example, if you add overtones and pinch them, you get something like that. Um, the next mode, and by the way, when both are selected, it's pink. Again, that color is pretty hard to see in this crappy camera, but this is pink, um, red plus blue. And then, so this one is um, sync, or really this is a, a phase wrapping, so uh, making the phase go faster within, or accumulate faster within its carrier period, wrapping back around, and then resetting at the end of the, the carrier period. Um, so that's kind of like a hard sync type sound, which if you apply the window, we get that classic sort of resonant filter sweep type sound. That one is 
the with the window is one of the Casio CZ waveforms as well, but on, on Warp Core, the window is applicable to really anything, not just, uh, you know, sp select algorithms. Um, the next of the overtone or, um, you know, multiplying uh, modes is mirroring, which sort of, sort of like uh, sync, but instead of wrapping the phaser around, it reflects it back um, when it hits the, the endpoints. Um, and then finally, I think I'm going to call this maybe scream or something like that. Um, it's sort of a, a weird um, wave shaper, wave folder type thing um, that gives you something pretty close to overtones, um, even though they're not pure harmonics. But it's a lot cleaner than the other two. Um, and then the last, lastly, the last two modes, uh, the effects or utility section. We've got a bit crusher, quantizing the phaser, and then phase shift, which mostly matters when you put a window on or have you know multiple um, multiple phase distortions happening at once. Um, if you just have a sine wave, it doesn't really sound like much, although you can hear it, um, the pitch changing if you do it fast enough, because that's how phase modulation works. If we have a continuous positive phase modulation that's accumulating, um, we'll get a, a positive pitch shift and vice versa. So if you're modulating that with CV, you will get pitch shifting effects. Um, but depending on what else is going on, it might not sound like a pure pitch shift. Okay, so, and then the cosine, I'll just go through these quickly again. You can see the differences. So this, uh, the bend gives you something more like a pulse wave on the cosine than it does on the sine. Oh, and similarly, by the way, the, the windowing works differently in the cosine because the windowing, this is like a downward saw window. Um, at the start of the period of a sine wave, we're at zero. So the downward, you know, the starts at a, a zero point, so they sort of converge um, with no discontinuities. Um, but the cosine wave at its zero uh, phase lookup starts at its maximum, so we actually get uh, a discontinuity here because we're applying a, a sine wave window to that. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, that's okay. It'll be explained at some point in, in visual detail. Um, so the cosine modes without the window, yeah, we've got our... These are all the same algorithms, just applied to a different lookup. There's the sawtooth. It looks very much like a sawtooth. That's a, one of the classic CZ, uh, Casio CZ phase distortions. Uh, this one is even more like a pulse wave. Uh, this is the pinch. So if you remember, we're sort of pinching the wave within its uh, within its period. If we do that to a cosine, we're actually pinching the sort of midpoint. Um, rather than uh, we're, we're pinching sort of the zero point or the midpoint of, of the cosine wave. So we actually kind of bring each edge closer together and we get something a lot more like a pulse. Um, there's the sync and then mirroring. For a cosine, mirroring and sync are the same. So that's not very exciting for the cosine, which is why I think the phase shift uh, matters. Um, and then the scream or the harmonic overtones. These end up a little more pure. They're, they're still uh, not pure harmonics. You still got multiple uh, partials in here, but they're uh, the bands are narrower, if you can see. So there we've got a wide wide band. Here we've got a narrow band, and the perceived pitch is different as well. That just has to do with the trigonometry that's being applied to the phaser. Um, and then finally, phase shift or. Yeah, uh, quantize and phase shift are going to be the same. They don't really matter uh, uh, for the phase. Um, cool. So what I said before, the cool thing about this uh, design is that you can have two in series. So here I've got a, a sync, a nice resonant filter, and then I can bend that so I can actually sort of shove it to one side and get a very different timbre. If we do that with our some of these other algorithms, there you get a pretty neat effect from that one. Uh, but let's take a look at how the order matters. These are nonlinear operations, so um, they the order that you apply them in does matter. 
Here first I've got the uh, kink and then then the sync, so we, we get sort of that kind of a effect. If I switch these, so first we've got our sync, and then we do the kink. Well, that sounds really different. Sounds pretty cool. With the window, you get a nice clean sound. You can get some of that grit if you turn the window off. And if we go to a cosine, Similar sound, but slightly different wave shape. So the order of these definitely matters, um, and that's what makes it fun. You can sometimes, yeah, here we've gotten into territory where it just sort of evaporates because we've narrowed our, our phaser so much. But if we switch, well, that's a really neat looking waveform. So that phase makes a huge difference. sound so there's lots of combinations obviously um into our bit crusher Get some of those yoy sounds going whoops So if we get rid of the discontinuity. And there's our phase shift. So yeah, endless possibilities for Timbre with this oscillator. I'm super excited about it be working more on the firmware in the coming weeks and uh, then sort of shifting back into hardware mode and making some changes based on what I've learned from this prototype. Um, but really hoping to have these available next, or not next year, hopefully not next year, hopefully later this year, have them available um, for purchase um, and get them out in the world and get people making cool music with it. <laughs> 